What's your sneaker fam? Welcome back to our sneakers. Before I start, I do want to say that I'm doing a raffle on the Jordan 1 Top 3. It is a size 7.5, they are DS, and every raffle ticket is a dollar each. You can go ahead and purchase a ticket on my website, which I will leave a link to down in the description below. There are a total of 300 entries, and right now there's a total of 100 and something taken. And plus, I will be at Sneaker Games Miami on Sunday, January 15th, if you want to go ahead and purchase them in person. So prior to this video, I did just make a video on how to do sneaker meetups, and I did want to tell you guys a story on one of my worst experiences. So back a few years ago, I used to have extensions on Google Chrome, and I used to have the hookup on getting shoes for retail. So basically, I was like the local plug for people around here and some guy in California. And I used to get every single release, and sometimes I would get more pairs than I anticipated. So I would just go ahead and sell them on local Facebook forums, which that was a really popular thing to do back in the day. I'm saying back in the day as if I was old or something. But yeah, that was a really popular thing to do. And some guy hit me up. He's like, yo, you're still selling these foams? And at the moment, I was selling the camo foams. And I think I got like two or three pairs. I sold one to the guy in California. I sold one to a guy down the street. And I had that one extra pair that nobody else really wanted. So I said, all right, whatever, bro. I'll sell them to you, blah, blah, blah. We were talking. It was all cool and whatever. He was being cool with me. I was being cool with him. And at the time, I was really young. So I was like, I was vulnerable. And I would fall for anybody that was nice to me, you know? So I was like, yo, let's meet up tomorrow. Come to my house. Give you the shoes. Give me the money. We got a deal. All right, cool. All right, boom. Go to sleep. Next day, this guy comes through to my house. Pulls up in a big-ass old blue Ford. It was like a, looking like an old dad truck. I'm here walking up with the boxes like, Next thing you know, this guy comes out of the car, walking towards me, approaching me pretty slowly. This guy snatches his shoes right out of my hands. I didn't have a good grip on anything. This guy just said, boom, took that. Grabbed his shoes, jumped into the bed of the truck, and that truck took off. Me, I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm like, what the hell just happened? And I didn't know what to do. I was young. So I start running after the truck. This truck was slow as hell. I'm telling this. Bruh, like he needs something with this truck. I don't know what the hell. I caught up to the truck. I'm fast, but point is, this man took off, and I have somehow found a way to catch up to the truck. The dumbass left the door open. Excuse my language, but the dumbass left the door open to the passenger side of the truck, and I hopped in, and I'm like, yo, stop the car. And at this time, I didn't know how to defend myself. I was a little, I don't know what else to say. I was just like, yo, stop the car. And this guy is telling me, hop out the car, hop out the car. And next thing you know, this guy's reaching over for the glove compartment. He's trying to, he's opening it, he's trying to open it, but I put my knee there so he couldn't open it. And me, I'm like, damn, I don't know what he's trying to go for, probably a gun, let me hop out. But by that time, I had already thought in my mind, I'm like, alright, I know what I'm going to do, I'm going to hop out, get his license plate number. I hop out, and just as I hop out, I barely caught the number. Luckily, it was a really easy number. And I was like, in my mind, I was repeating, I'm like, alright, license plate number, I'm repeating it, repeating it, repeating it. And next thing, I'm like, shit, should I call the cops? I don't know, I don't like... And at that time, I didn't know how to call the cops. That was probably my first time. And I'm just, like, shaking. I'm like, yo, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Bam, I had to call the cops. That's the only option I had. And not only that, but I was scared. And you're not going to take a 200 something dollar shoe from me. That's a lot of money coming out of my pocket. So I was like, yo, I'm calling the cops. I called the cops. I told them, hey, this happened. And I tried to give them the number as fast as possible so I don't forget. They asked me for my address. It took them, like, five minutes to come to my house. And then they asked me a bunch of questions. Was I hurt? Did you get the not license plate number, what they look like, or a bunch of questions, like 21 questions up in there. You know how cops be. So when I gave them all the information, I gave them my phone number, my parents' phone number, because I was young. I gave them what they look like. And then and then from there, they called my parents. They asked them if they wanted to file charges, because I couldn't since I was too young. So they asked them. And then they had some other cops go look at the license plate number and find out the address. And then they went to go to the house. And then the description of the car that I said the car was... They said it matched it, and then they put me in the car, and then they took me to the house, and they're like, is this the car that you saw? And I'm like, yeah. And then they had the kids outside, handcuffed, on the curb, and they drove me by, and they couldn't see me because the windows were tinted. And they asked me to identify them, make sure that that was them, the ones that stole from me. And then, of course, I confirmed that that was them. And they're idiots because, first of all, they were actually, didn't have a license, and they drove their stepdad's truck, which there's, I'm sure their stepdad whooped their ass, the law whooped their ass, and I won that case. But, let me finish the story. So after that, the officers took me back to the station. They sat me down in a room for, shoot, probably like one, two, three hours. I don't know what I was doing. I was watching TV. I was so bored. And I couldn't leave. Like, I had to wait for them to get everything solved out. And then in the end, they retrieved my shoes. They got me the shoes back for me. And they dropped me off at home. And it was just a pretty bad experience. But in the end, it felt good just because... I did get my shoes back, and I ended up winning, you know. 
And it sucks for the guy that did that. I mean, I hope they learned the lesson. And hopefully they're not as bad as they were before. But yeah, thank God I was okay. Thank God I came back with the shoes. I ended up selling them. I got my profit. And these kids ended up going to juvenile for like a few days. And actually, I was scared. I was like, yo, a few days. What do they come back? They know where I live, this and that. But then eventually I got over it. They never came through. So I was like, all right, I guess I'm fine. And if they're watching this video right now, that's pretty funny. Don't steal from me, mother. So yeah, basically... I'm more of a person that doesn't like to lose, especially not money, so when it comes to that and you're stealing from me, and that's basically my business, I'm going to come after you, like, I don't like that. But whatever. <sighs> if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe. We are trying to get to 5,000 by Sneaker Comfort Lauderdale, which is February 11th. Let me know if you guys want to see more videos like this, like this story time kind of thing. I know it's kind of long, but like, like I said, just leave a comment down below. And let me know if you want to see more of this and what kind of stories you would want to see. Make sure you stay woke. Our sneaker sign out. Peace! Come on, focus. Focus. Screw it.